Dart, Nicorette. <laughs> I'll give him a go last week and I tell you, haven't had one since. Uh, this one, Mark in Aberdeen. He says, uh, Rico, winning the 2002 grand final with Fletch. What are your memories of the celebrations? I don't have a lot of memories of the celebrations. No, it was great. Obviously, uh, 2002 was pretty amazing. Um, you know, I suppose being at a club all your life and I said to Fletcher the other day, like looking at the 1975 grand final over and over at every function we went to and just trying to create your own history. And um, Ricky Stewart obviously got us to the, to the big dance and um, Fletcher scored the last try. I think it was a try assist. Off to you, Fletcher. It was and, too. Yep. Um, and then we're back at your house. Remember, we, got we back, had a party at... Uh, yeah, we went back to mine after uh, we left the cross or something like that and then kicked on for... Last try scorer. I was last try scorer, yeah. Oh, okay. 28 to 1. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I had some friends who backed me, yeah. That's okay. incredible. Yeah. Great <laughs> memories there. <laughs> oh, it was Those awesome. Those friends going on the end of your trip? Uh, a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. Don't talk How to a couple of them. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. Now, Mark and Aberdeen again, he says, How sh on the other side of it, how shattering, Rico, missing out on the 2004 grand final and watching the team lose from the stands. Yeah, it was really bad, actually. Um, oh, God, this is this incident. Yes, is. Yeah. Here comes Stephen Seagal. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. Oh. Under siege, Buzz and Ricky gone. Oh. <laughs> oh, I apologise to Nathan Fee right there. What um, was that? Well, there's a bit of history to it. I mean, we played a. Uh, no, what was uh, the punt? Fee hasn't oh, woke up. Well, Nathan hasn't woken up yet. Yeah, look, we had a game um, against the Warriors, and um, I think Owen Guttenbeel came out and got Ned Caddick in a. Um, um, in a game before the finals and Ricky Stewart got us in and said if that happens again you know that incident when someone's on the ground you're all standing around not knowing what to do yeah. and it's uh, it's one in all in and I, th I th literally thought Freddie got a punch on yeah. the side of the head there and when, when, you, when you hit him like I mean that's instinctive as he hit the ground did it dawn on you I think I might have cost myself a grand final um, not just then but afterwards uh, standing looking at the referee and oh. unfortunately I had Nathan's tooth in my arm and um, wasn't a good sign but um, no. on the replay actually Adrian Morley came from 10 deep and um, he, he just missed a flying punch which would have probably got him 10 weeks so thank god oh, he, yeah. didn't, he didn't land with yeah. that one and he now, played. <clears throat> this one from Julie. Matty can you show us the Tina Turner commercial starring Luke? Well guess what Julie? Here it is. <laughs> Picking up like a rag doll, threw me on the ground. First game, petrified. I said, welcome to first grade, son. You've got to choose what you want to do and go for it. I think rugby league's changed enormously in the past few years. Give it your best shot, you know. Just your best shot. I just hate losing. I just want to be a little love to make Tina Turner. Well, everyone loves a winner, eh? I want to be the best. Oh, great ads. Uh, the following year, did you meet Tina Turner? I did, yeah. They did a follow-up ad and um, they got me. I was doing a bench press or something like that and she snuck up behind me and um, surprised there. me. I don't know if I was that surprised, but yeah, yeah Tina Turner. I'll tell you what, her stage musical with this COVID stuff it was about to come to Australia. I saw it overseas at London. It is incredible. Best thing I've ever seen. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what if you on a that? different note. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where, where were you doing... The weights. Like I was actually a peck deck. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Were you were training? No, no, no. We um, we were at uh, Piermont or someone in a um, in a makeshift gym, sort of set up and oh, filming the ad. Filming the ad, and yeah, you didn't she know said, that. Okay, didn't know. They set it all up, and gotcha. and I didn't act surprised. And they said, "Can we do it again?" <laughs> I had to pretend I was surprised. At, uh, oh God! How, how oh, many, Tina. How many takes did it takes to do that. What the one your, that what was your line. What was your line in that again? Um, give well, your give me your best you. shot. Your best shot, and then I'd love to meet Tina Turner. Was this one off, was it? Oh, I think so. Yeah. I can't remember. It was a long time ago, it's Nathan. Good. I'm not a good acting as you, though. Two of us Newcastle blokes went down. We were in, honestly we were there for two or three hours. I went home and said to Trish, I'm in the turn, turn. I, I, To be honest, I'll be in it for probably about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> when they found the product, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Show my triceps, huh? Uh, <laughs> this one, Sam, he's a proud Irishman living in Liverpool, England. He says, uh, Luke. Who had the better celebrations when you played for Australia or when you represented Ireland with such pride in the World Cup? Yeah, um, there it is, Ireland. Yeah, we had a great time. So in 2000, 
Oh, the hamstrings. Um, <laughs> we, uh, David Barney was playing over at Leeds at the time and we had that grandparent rule and um, myself, Kevin Campion, good old Danny Williams yeah. um, uh, and obviously David Barney went and played and look, it was just a great time. And the funny thing about rugby league is we um, obviously go as far as Campbelltown, North Queensland, yeah. uh, Newcastle and uh, to get an opportunity to go and spend some time in Ireland and Mate. travel around Europe. It was just a great opportunity. I Successful loved it. World Cup. You won three from four. Yeah. Narrowly beaten in the quarterfinals, was it, by England? By England, yeah. We had them at half time and um, it was quite interesting because a lot of the English uh, Super League players um, didn't play for England, uh, like guys like Barry McDermott and these guys. And, yep. Um, they just wanted to beat England and Barry and Terry. The, Terry, Terry O'Connor. O'Connor went on the journey and uh, Got a little bit of Irish and English uh, rivalry right yeah. there, which was pretty interesting. The history was great, so really yeah. enjoyed it. Now, it's time to bring in our uh, mate up in Queensland. By the way, doesn't play for anything in Queensland. Petrol, clothes, and there's an hour or two. <laughs> hey, Gordy. <laughs> how are you, Gordy? G'day, guys. How are we going? Good to talk to you, mate. How are you doing? Now, were you surprised by the situation with Paul McGregor this week, or you saw it coming? Oh, look, uh, the drums have been beating, but I really feel sorry for Mary. I think he's handled himself with... With a, with a class and not to make all the decisions when your head's on the chopping block, I think. Mm. Um, it's a little bit unfair, but he had the team seven days a week. I thought they tried mm. their best, but if you really look at their roster and say how many how many players the Roosters would take, it'd probably only be Tyson Frizzell, you would think. Yeah. Uh, Gordy, boys, let's, what we're going to talk about now is who replaces Paul McGregor. And it seems like the obvious... Fellow, it may be Craig Fitzgibbon, but Rico, do you think he he would take the job? Because he's been fairly selective so far. Oh, look, Fitz has come out publicly and said he had a handshake agreement with the club and he'll stay on for this period. But um, Robbo, even two weeks ago, said he's he's ready. He's ready to move on. And right. I mean, Fitz he still lives down that way. Um, look, he likes surfing. He likes being down near Wollongong. And um, he's not the obvious choice, does he? You it? know, and he's he's ready. He's ready to he's ready to go. Tell the other one, good one there, Gordius. I mean, Paul Green. You know, Green, he's won a competition. He, like, his name's been floated around here, there, and sort of everywhere a little bit, but no one's really gone for him. If I was a club boss, he's one of the first places I'd go for. Yeah, Green, he had a lot of success. I think he won his first two competitions in the Brisbane Comp. Uh, and then, obviously, the Cowboys. It was a long time coming, and uh, they won it in 2015. And, you know, I think that his voice was getting a bit old um, at the Cowboys, but certainly he'd be a great acquisition to any coach. Now, Gordy. I mean, uh, to, any to team. Any team. Nah, I got you, mate. <laughs> um, now, Gordy, another horror week for the Broncos. And look, we're not going to put the slipper in here. It's been, it really has been terrible. Like, I can't remember in, in my life following football a side that's gone through so much in, in what is really half a season at the moment. Apart from all the COVID stuff this week, late yesterday they lo- lose Matt Lodge to a broken leg. Xavier Coates again today. Gordy, I think it's gone past the point of saying, ex-players saying, geez, what's the matter with this club? Is there a degree of sympathy now towards the boys in the oh, club? Oh, yeah. Uh, absolutely, Matty. I've felt sorry for the players for a long time. They've, you know, I thought they got thrown in the deep end. I said that, I think, when the Roosters went through them. Um, they've been asked to do a job that they're not capable of doing. There's no experience there. Um, I think they've lost trust in each other. They've lost trust in the leaders above them. And... When I say the leaders, I'm talking about the board, the coach and everybody. Um, the players, they're not acting out. They, you know, I just think that they don't know what they're doing at the moment. I feel sorry for them. They went to have a beer here. Um, the cops have cleared them from not doing any wrongdoing, but uh, I think that they broke the COVID um, restrictions to the game. But I actually really feel sorry for these young guys and hopefully yeah. that the mental scars that they've got over the last couple of months don't hang around for the rest of their career. Canberra and Canberra this week doesn't get any easier. Uh-huh. Gordon? Fellas, all of it, New Zealand Warriors. Um, now, they've been told, um, don't know if everybody's quite across it, but there's a lot of talk coming from the NRL that the Warriors could be here to the end of next season, which, for, mate, for them and the family, it's enormously difficult, to the point that Roger Tuvasa-Shek has said, mate, if that's the case, you know, I'm not keen for it, to the point that he's looking maybe to switch to New Zealand rugby. I mean, Gordon, what's the solution here? Well, it's sad to lose him, but if he wants to go back and play in his family and the Warriors have to stay um, in Australia to stay in the competition, I suppose that's what you've got to do. That's the sacrifices you've got to make. Look at Melbourne Storm tonight. They haven't played a home game in eight weeks. They're living on the Sunshine Coast and 
you haven't heard a murmur out of them. They just go out there and do their business. And yeah. those guys are playing away from their family. There's a lot of young kids, maybe in their time, that have gone from the bush and, you know, you know, I mean, have lived away from their family to play yeah. the game of rugby league. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's any different for the Warriors at the moment. Mate, if I was Nathan Brown, I'd be, <laughs> you'd be like seriously, I'll have his uh, phone number on redial. You'd think, though, going to Rugby Union, I mean, he's on a million dollars over... Yeah. Well, they're the saying it'll be a so huge he, pay cut. He, he, yeah, so, I mean, he's one of the players. Some of the players have got their family yeah. actually over, over here. With him. He hasn't. He's the thing was tricky. Kem mamalo has gone home. Fusa yeah. has gone home. So you, can't just... really, I, you can't really blame him. I, I don't think so. And he played Rugby Union as a kid. Yeah. So maybe That's... the, the, uh, the uh, All Blacks might top up his... Don't know. Top up his whack.